expectations. Comfortable wins over BYU, Pacific, Arkansas, Little Rock, and Cal Baptist. A combined margin of victory of 101 points. But they go up against unbeaten Tulsa in Vegas, and we're underway. It does help they beat Cal Baptist by 40. I mean, True. And, and Cal Baptist, Rick Croy does an outstanding job, but their first year in Division I, and they came up against Nevada. Right away, it's Jordan Caroline, Nevada's leading rebounder, but he can put it in as well. Yeah, Caroline, only about six foot five, but they play him as a center and as a power forward using his incredible athleticism. Five seniors in the starting lineup for Nevada as Jeffries rattles it in and out from three. And Jeffries is the most talented of the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Second chance for Nevada. And it is Cody Martin wearing 11, his brother Caleb wearing 10. To the top players in the Mountain West and certainly in the country as a whole. Caroline puts down his dribble, fed it outside to Treshawn Thurman. Caleb Martin, under 10 to shoot, starts his drive, managed to hang on to the ball, but tossed it up wildly, never got the rim, and Tulsa gets the takeaway. Well, Frank Haith has developed a different style since arriving at Tulsa. They've become a very good zone team. That was a matchup zone. Blocked by Martin. Last year, Lynn, the Wolfpack in blocks. A three from Taplin comes up short. And this is Cody Martin, the better defender of the two. Caleb Martin, the better scorer of the two. Both, as you mentioned, transfer from NC State. The pitch to both of them, you play on a team that has a professional attitude amongst them and a chance to do some serious damage come March. Late shot clock, a heave from Martin, didn't draw anything. An awful shot selection from Nevada as Tulsa doing a great job of ganging up. You see Frank Haith. From Miami to Missouri to Tulsa. He got into the tournament and all his stops. Of course, the former Rick Barnes assistant. Foul underneath oh, Nevada. And Eric Musselman, his fourth season. Professional background. You and Andy were talking about it. His dad, longtime coach, both pro and college. Turned 54 years of age on Monday. Celebrated with that big win over Cal Bassist. Of course, he's been a head coach in the NBA with the Sacramento Kings. Was at LSU and his Arizona State as an assistant coach. Coached at every level and has a remarkable work ethic. Caroline knocks in a three. Now, when Jordan Caroline knocks in a three, they become really difficult to guard. Caroline averaging a double-double coming into the day. Over 1,500 points in his collegiate career. Wouldn't, Five nothing start for Nevada. Wouldn't stun anybody to see him in an NFL uniform huh. in years to come. Uh, he's certainly built. Most his dad and his grandpa will play in the National Football League. Five to shoot. Taplin straight away. No. A rebound juggled and tapped out to Chris Barnes. Transfer from UTEP. Barnes the drive, knocked back out, and a fresh 30 for Tulsa. <laughs> Jeffries puts down his dribble. Tulsa unable to find the lane to pass. And it's Taplin, lob pass, great grab by Bonn who had it swatted away in the end. Six to shoot, never touched the rim. Barnes all the way down the lane to finish. And Chris Barnes with a great drive and finish. One, he almost, almost too much spin, too much English and missed it. But the defense and the intensity from Nevada is palpable here courtside. Martin swirls it in and out. That would be Caleb from the corner. Underneath, it's Trey Porter, the transfer from Old Dominion, knocked away, but a foul is called. Let's talk about Chris Barnes, who drives in. And of course, he played at UTEP, coaching change at UTEP, and he leaves. And Barnes, a very talented athlete, six foot four, 200 pounds. 
Mm, so the, the, the big difference if you watch these bodies, older, mature bodies. That's why college basketball, they say get old and stay old. That's part of using the transfer process, getting fifth-year seniors in there. Uh, Trey Porter's interesting. You know, transfer from ODU. He graduated in December, so he's eligible immediately. But it, it does change Nevada, not always for the better. Uh, well coached at ODU. But sometimes this team can be more effective when Jordan Caroline is their biggest player, so it spreads them out offensively. That's one area that Nevada wanted to improve. They wanted to get a little bit bigger. Jeffries, nice touch off the window. And as Andy Katz told us in between games, if you haven't heard of Daquan Jeffries, you will, not just after this tournament, but when you watch Tulsa play in America. Thurman off the shot fake. Caleb Martin guarded tightly by Jeffries. It's Cody, the step back off the heel of the ring. Don't try and prove to the world how great a shooter you are. Take rhythm jump shots. Jordan Caroline. Caroline's office is right there in, in the, it's called the keyhole, right? Where the, the top of the key, and there used to be that kind of semi-circle underneath. He's not really a three-point shooter, but you get it to him 17 feet from the basket against the college center, and he's trouble. Jeffries unable to answer. Rebound pulled down by Simon Falacoon. And he scores plus one. Sophomore Juco transfer from Houston, Texas. Uh, Falicoon gets it and just attacks. And you, you recognize the difference with no Trey Porter in. Nevada, a little bit of defensive weakness in there. Cody Martin gets caught underneath in kind of wrong place, wrong time. You know, it, it, it's interesting having watched Tulsa's program and their struggle to get back to where it was the heights of NCAA tournament after NCAA tournament. Changing leagues, I think, has obviously hurt them. You go back to the days of the Valley where they had more rivals in terms of proximity. Maybe Conference USA. They're just that formation of the American. Not a lot of teams nearby. It's not just teams nearby. It's are you going to... When you can watch games on TV, are you going to turn off your TV and go to see them play Tulane or East Carolina or Central Florida? Just not ones that fill the relic center. Caleb Martin, off balance, missed it. Rebound, tracked down by Jazz Johnson. Fed it through a tight window to Cody Martin. I think Jazz Johnson, incredibly important to come off the bench and stretch that defense out for Jordan Caroline. Caroline, scoop shot wouldn't go. He got a bump on the way. This game is super, super physical. Not easy on the eyes, but incredibly physical. And Caroline, and Caroline, a tremendous player. Of course, his dad is Simeon Rice. Incredible football player in his own right. Andy Katz, more on Johnson. Doug, you just mentioned the energy that he brings. Eric Musselman telling me yesterday that he's that energizer bunny that comes off the bench, a transfer from Portland. And, and guess what? He actually sat out and worked with Nevada last season. So he saw the progress of this program. You know, we don't get that that much this season where everyone, or this, <laughs> this time in the era of college basketball where everyone's trying to get waivers. He actually worked on his game, sat out, and he is one of the most important players on this roster because of that energy he can bring off the bench. Oh, he's a crowd favorite. Just talking with some of the Nevada folks. Loves to shoot the long ball, opens up the offense. The crowd up in Reno, they love him. Foul away from the ball. It is on Tulsa. Well, you mentioned the crowds. We get ready for North Carolina, Texas. Like, look, the Wolfpack are kind of like what UNLV used to be in this town. Obviously, now you have hockey, and UNLV has been down for a couple of years. Well, that's a program that you go back, and when Mark Fox first kind of got it going there, uh, they've always had great crowds, and Doug Newth, Found the perfect hire at the perfect time. The Doug Newt, the athletic director at Nevada for this Wolfpack program to be resurrected. Certainly heavy expectations. Kayla Martin knocking it down. And the foul. Was 
strength to fight off the contact and hit this shot. And Elijah Joyner has Caleb Martin who sticks out his leg and his arm. That was not a foul, but it's a vet move. Watch Martin. He shoots, and then he falls through his leg and his foot, getting contact from Joyner. Joyner's like, what did I do? Wrong place, wrong time. Now, remember, the difference in the two, Caleb is much more of a shooter, whereas Cody is not. Of course, due to injury, had to play the point guard position late in the Mountain West season. Yeah, Lindsey Drew went down with injury, and that kind of forced Nevada to rethink their lineup. Well, that's one reason that they struggled late in the Mountain West, because Lindsey Drew is just an unselfish pass-first guy. And people sagged off of Cody, and it was deer playing almost four-on-five offensively. Tulsa nearly creating a turnover on the baseline. It's Caroline off the mark from three. Taplin with the run out. Sterling Taplin, the head fake, the scoop shot. And it's a charge on Taplin. Very close. I, I, think, it was a, I think it was a goaltend where Jordan Caroline, because he blocked it after it hit the backboard. I think that was okay, the signal, yeah, the signal was two. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it, was, it was very similar to the signal for a charge. Taplin was not yeah. making that. Yeah, yeah. That's one of those you're playing too hard. That one going anywhere near the bucket. Yeah. Thought that would have been the case. A shot fake, and Johnson knocks it down from three. That's why I mentioned he's there. Vinny Johnson, come off the bench, stretch the defense. A tremendous catch and shoot jump shooter. A pass over the head of Martin Zigbanu. Turnover again for Tulsa. Jazz Johnson, the weak side, not really sure why he shot faked, but he decided to do so, and Boston Corita gets three in his eye and now checks out of the game. Third turnover for the Golden Hurricane. Yeah, Zeke Moore, a little too sped up, came in the game, first time he touched the ball, turned it over. Johnson, another, no. Rebounding bottom. Also going to their bench. Jariah Horn off the bench as Taplin locates him in the corner. Well, this is the difference between Nevada and other schools of their level is their bench is a little bit more developed than a Tulsa. Martin with the drive, a foul on the floor. Physical game to start at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. Nevada with the lead. Think, oh, you never wants to play. Everyone's coming back. Not the case. Eric Musselman worked tirelessly on the schedule to try to get people to play him. This Loyola Chicago game actually was part of the Missouri Valley Mountain West Conference challenge last year. That so they matched them up, but he didn't have control of that. He's going to USC. He's got Arizona State also in LA. We saw Arizona State last night. Uh, they could be better than people think in the Pac-12. So those could be quality games. And then. Playing South Dakota State, by the way, actually, it could be a good power rating yeah. game because they're going to win their league. Mike but outside Scott. of that, he could not get the power five type schools to play him. And that should not come as a shock because they don't want to play Nevada until they have to in March. Well, it's part of the magic of scheduling. Remember, you played Nevada this year. I'm sure they would play him in a neutral site or maybe a two for one. He's loaded up for this year with all these seniors. And so do you want to have Nevada on your schedule for years to come? Look, USC, Arizona State, those are good programs. Talented players. We haven't seen USC play. They got Kevin Porter Jr. A great talent as a freshman. A little James Harden to his game. Caroline pulls down the rebound. Five-point lead for Nevada. Corey Henson, the transfer from Wagner, splashes in a three. There's an injury underneath to Trey Porter, who got collided with as Henson was putting in the three. Well, this is just such a gift to bring in a guy as well-traveled as a Corey Henson. Well, let's just look. They're just banging underneath. This game has been super, super physical. Also clearly ready to play, and I, I mentioned matching the physicality of Nevada. Curran Scott, yes, from three. He has the answer. Tulsa back within five. And Curran Scott, an elite three-point shooter. A little over-rotation there defensively, though. Well, that catch a little too hard to handle for Caroline. He battles through all of that and rolls it off the rim. 
Uh, Jordan Caroline is a great talent in college basketball. He's a little bit of a below-the-rim guy, a BTR guy. And sometimes he struggles to finish over length with all those bodies that Tulsa threw at him. A new 30 for the Wolfpack. Cody Martin. And you, can hear the, you can hear the entire Tulsa bench saying that's not the shooter. As Cody Martin shows what he is, a phenomenal rebounder. As he runs to rebound, he gets called for an offensive foul. You know, the interesting thing, and I think Andy can speak to this, having, having covered the sport and played the sport, is a lot of times when guys declare for the draft, like Caleb did, Caleb Martin, when they come back to school, it can be really hard because they're watching guys that they competed against play in the NBA, make money, and they're not as bought in. That's not been the case with Caleb Martin. He's gotten back in the lab and made himself into a better player. So too is his brother Cody and Jordan Caroline. Well, to hit the underside of the rim. But I think that's been the pitch for all these guys to come back. As Caroline draws a foul in the lane, is that you could put them all together and they could and do Doug, something special. Doug, I will tell you that I think that we have entered a little bit of a new era where players are actually listening. And the Martin Twins and Jordan Caroline were not going to be, you know, first-round draft picks that were going to go high enough to where it would make sense to leave. Obviously, they've got a head coach in Eric Musselman that knows the NBA as well as any head coach in America. And we're now starting to see guys, listen, I did a Maryland game on BTN on Sunday, and a great example of that, you know, was Bruno Fernando. He listened to Mark Turgeon. He was going to be a first-round pick, and he came back, and he'll be a better player, whereas Kevin Herter also listened to Mark Turgeon, who told him, you know what, I'm here in your top 20, so you should go. Yeah. And so the good thing is the Martin Twins didn't just go for the short money, something, something fast. By the time they get to the pros, if they can make it, they'll be better players for it. Yeah, and, and look, Caleb, in, in his defense, he had a foot injury. He didn't play well. I talked to one of his actual coaches at the pre-draft, and the coaches there said, dude, you got to go back to school. You have to work on your game. He's a little overwhelmed, uh, and part of that was because of injury. But yes, you're right. I mean, they do have the information. All of them have the information. It's just a question of do they listen to coaches they should trust? Big Bonu, strong take, he got fouled. And you know, one of the things I love best about watching good teams, you watch Nevada's bench, and you see that from Tulsa's bench as well, is they're all locked in on the scatter report, and you see them all telling them what's coming and where they should be. Look at Bonu's body, it's developed during his time at TU. I'll tell you what, there are about also a half dozen graduate assistants and other managers, and they have a staff that I think is larger than every single player on the roster, including transfers that are sitting out. Well, that, that it's was, huge. That was one of the challenges. When, when Doug Newt was looking for a head coach, when, when they went and hired Eric Musselman, they, they didn't have deep, deep pockets. It wasn't a well-paying job. And so they had to kind of figure things out. But as they won, Eric Musselman hasn't taken a ton more money for himself. He's tried to spread it out and give more guys opportunities. And the way it works in basketball, Eric Musselman knows everybody because his family's been part of basketball his entire Entire life, so you may not make a ton of money going living up in Reno, but it doesn't cost a ton to live there, and it's going to give you an opportunity to put that on your resume and work somewhere else. Barnes couldn't handle that pass, and yeah, Tulsa has the run up. Taplin, a three, shorts. Thurman, the rebound for the Wolfpack. Well, Tulsa's looked every bit the equal of Nevada so far in the first half. Gala Martin. Bounces it off the front of the rim. Same team collision between Jeffries and Scott. Uh, Jeffries and Barnes, excuse me, and it resulted in an easy basket for the Wolfpack. Barnes Igbanu now. That's what he likes. That's his office. Just off the post, and he'll pass off the double team. Deep three, short from Joyner. Nevada up six. Thurman makes it nine. Timeout, Frank Haith. 
Tulsa. Looks a little bit rattled, and Nevada has its large... Look at the stats. Eric Musselman at Nevada. He has run up some sensational numbers for a program that was a little bit, you know, sort of struggling and trying to find its footing in the Mountain West. And I'm going to tell you what Musselman has been able to do with sort of the hodgepodge of recruiting, very kind of pro-league-like, getting transfers, four-year guys, guys that are sitting out. He's been able to put together an elite basketball program at his level, a team that can certainly compete at the national level. And I'll tell you, Doug and Alex, I think Nevada could do what Gonzaga has done in the WCC. I think you're going to see Nevada do that in the Mountain West. I think there's separation occurring right now where Nevada could be the dominant program for years to come. Oh, I, I disagree with you greatly. I, I, I couldn't... Po hold on, hold on. Hold on. I, I understand. You covered New Mexico basketball. Yes, and I'm telling you, it's a different world right now. Oh, I, I disagree. They're mired in uh, budget crisis. I think, Nevada, I think the way... Nevada's got it going right now with transfers, and if he's going to produce pros, which he will we're off this roster, I think he has the chance to extend the gap, if you will. Andy, he loses his entire team after this season. He's still San Diego State, UNLV, who I believe UNLV's on the rise. San Diego State, kind of a bizarre trip to Hawaii where they played really well, and then they got blown out. Look, I, I think the Nevada, no question, can be here to stay if Eric Musselman stays. But I think that league has just been down for a couple years. I think uh, Medved's going to do a good job at Colorado State. I, I'm going to disagree with you. They're not going to dominate this league. Well, they might do it this year. Uh, yeah, but what Gonzaga's been able to do is Gonzaga's a high major playing in a low and mid-major league. Yeah. And th that's not the case here. Whoa! Going upstairs to grab that ball was Trey Porter. By the way, if you haven't, Mountain West basketball has some of the incredible venues, yeah. like the pit at New Mexico. Now they pack them in 10,000 strong in Reno as Taplin scoops this in. Oh, that howling, the Wolfpack howl. Mm -hmm. It is eerie. And I'm not trying to diminish at all what Nevada's been able to build. But the, the reason they were so down, in addition to the fact that they, they, you know, they didn't have the right coaching staff, is they stepped up a, a level in weight class. They stepped into the Mountain West when San Diego State was rolling and New Mexico was rolling. And UNLV had the number one pick in the NBA draft. Now they've raised their level, and I think others will as well. Foul Lacoon there with a foolish foul on Jazz Johnson, who had to the line for three. Well, one of the other things that I alluded to earlier with the, the staff of graduate assistants and managers for Eric Musselman's team as well, it's, it is professional like in that you can only spend so much on scholarships. You can only have so many uh, players on your roster based on the budgeting. But you can spend above the cap and you can have guys traveling with you who are able to coach and scout and have a full practice even with the transfers who aren't able to play yet. Yeah, you just you got to be careful with transfers, and I think Eric Musselman, he's got Rex Walters there on his staff, a former head coach, a great player in his own right, former head coach of San Francisco. Got to be careful. Sometimes, I look, I'm a former transfer. Got to be careful knowing who you're taking because you can't take on other people's problems. Yeah, they very fortunate. Jordan Caroline, great family, great worker. The Martin twins, great family, great workers. You have those guys as your core players to build around. Keeps everybody else in line. You just you have to be careful sometimes. You can get a bad mix of transfers, and it's hard to get a guy to transfer twice. Karita off the inbounds pass. The gap trimmed back to nine. Well, remember, San Diego State built their program on transfers. This is not this is not a new idea. And there's Jordan Caroline in the office. Yep. He's he's too big for you to put a guard on him and and too quick to put a center on him. Let's take a look at some notable games brought to you by USAA. Insurance banking investments tailored for the military community. We've been building up to Big matchups tonight on FS1, UNC Texas, UCLA, Michigan State. That is basketball royalty. We have iconic programs. I'm, I'm, fan, I'm really interested to see what Texas does this year. If you're looking at the most championships in the history of the sport, you got three of them here tonight on this floor of the Orleans Arena. 
Of course, Hall of Famer and legend Bill Raftery will be on the call. Mm -hmm. Onions will be served at some point. Is that a Thanksgiving? Maybe a double order. Is that a Thanksgiving dish? Onions? It might have to be today. Lawson Carita working with Martin Zigbana here. Nevada leading by 10. Going to get the 5-0. and oh. and This will go back to Tulsa and with 12 of the shot clock. Nevada is, they really play 5 as 1 defensively. The switching, the communication, they're physical. Now look at Jazz Johnson in a stance, not using his hands. Outstanding defense. Tap one, crossover, tough shot, oh, got fouled. I think that was an assumption foul. That, that was not a foul. Now, Caleb Martin jumped, and usually that's called a foul if Taplin jumps into him, but he tried to. I think he missed him. You know what happens when you assume, right? When you assume you, yes. you can make a bad call. Yes. Oh, you were thinking something else. I was thinking something else. <laughs> Did he get him? Yeah, I don't Man. know if he got him or if he got basketball. Grazed him. Sterling Taplin, one of the... Very few four-year guys for Frank Haith at Tulsa. Only he and Igbano are the remaining regulars compared to just two years ago. Last year, one of the top assists per game guys in the American. And their leader for going on three years. Foul right in front of the Tulsa bench. And Frank Haith gets a good look at it. People, people so quickly forget. You want to talk about great uh, res uh, histories in college basketball. Last 25 years, because Gonzaga passed that incredible threshold to finally get into a Final Four, we've seen VCU and George Mason and others, Loyola Chicago. Before there was Gonzaga, and even before there was Xavier, it was Tulsa. Nolan Richardson, Bill Self. Dave Robinson, great coaches that went on to bigger jobs, and that's the other challenge with Eric Musselman is someone will come call him with a big check and see if he stays in Reno. Sterling Taplin right down Broadway. And Spring Martin calls an NBA set with a double-stacked high post that created that layup. And Tulsa has stemmed the bleeding somewhat, keeping the gap between 8 and 10. Nearly a travel from Corey Henson. Reverse back outside. Jordan Brown's first touch, the freshman, and one of the highest-ranked athletes of any sport to sign with Nevada. Oh, he's, he's tremendous. Probably the highest-ranked big man since JaVel McGee played in Nevada for one season. Takeaway. Thurman looking for the jump ball, and he does get it. Possession arrow favors Tulsa. What a great play by Trayshawn Thurman. Transfer from Nebraska, Omaha. It's one thing to be a three-point shooter and have a senior-laden team. Watch the deflection, and then will you get on the floor? Rips it away. And even though they don't get a possession, the younger players on the team, you talk about the, the culture that they want to bring with a Jordan Brown, a super talented freshman, that's how you want your younger kids to play. And if the seniors buy in, the younger kids will follow. Burns Scott nearly took too long to get that ball in. Taplin steps back on Brown, turned it over. Jazz Johnson off to the races. Too much on the lay-in. Offensive board, Caroline, and he puts it back up and in. Nevada back to their largest lead of the game. Step out of Wolfpack team, 29-8 last year. And off to a 4-0 start this season. Scott double team in big time trouble. Has it taken away? Jump ball, possession arrow. We his feet laterally. You know, so oftentimes, and there has been a diminished value in centers, not just in college basketball, but also in the NBA. But that's because there's a limited number of centers who have the foot speed to switch defensively. If you watch Jordan Brown defensively, he does have that lateral foot speed, and he seems to be completely bought in to Eric Musselman telling him, hey, look, you want to play the next level? It's not. We know you can score on offense. Can you guard on defense? I'm talking with Gus Arsenal 
before the game, one of the assistants for Nevada, and he says, you know what, that's professional style, right? It's positionless basketball. No such thing as a true center in the NBA anymore. And is that go-to move? Yeah. The hook over, he likes to take one dribble, hook over the left shoulder. And slowly you got to develop a counter move to it. Because what he does here. A three from Lawson Carita. That's a much needed basket for Tulsa. And Carita can really stretch the floor. He also got a clever layup on an out of bounds play as Tulsa just looking for any sort of offense. Caroline and Nevada in no hurry. Henson back to Caroline. Ten to shoot. Caroline drew some contact. No whistle. It was appealing for a foul, none given. Curran Scott drops it into the corner. A three from Carita skips off the front of the rim. Henson with a run out. And he'll button hook back. Entry pass swatted away by Taplin. And he spins away from further trouble, but coughs it up to Jazz Johnson. Johnson nearly took it away. Taplin a bit out of control at center court. Uh, the, the impressive part about Nevada continues to be, even if it isn't pretty offensively, look at Jazz Johnson laying out. Making the most of every minute you get. Taplin, a couple stutter steps, starts his drive, picks up his dribble, heaves it up and banks it in. I think Tulsa's played pretty well defensively, and they still allowed 42 points. <laughs> also, they've had a team that's one of the top offensive teams in the nation. Now, granted, the opposition hasn't been that strong, but... Once Starling Taplin drives in, dri you drive right to the chest of the defense. And Taplin's got that kind of old school vet game where he doesn't get sped up, he doesn't take bad shots, and Frank Haith has done a marvelous job and with his staff development. There's Frank, fifth season at Tulsa. We were chatting before the game. This is, he believes, his most complete team yet and they might still be building for one more year certainly Taplin would be the only key player to graduate assuming nobody transfers but feel good about what they're building here at Tulsa it's been a couple years since they made the tournament Taplin missed the rim Thurman drops and Henson hands it off to Caroline Johnson nearly traveled Tulsa Bench certainly thought so. Caroline through the contact, lays it in. What a monster Jordan Caroline is. I mean, just an absolute monster. Strong, physical, agile, and he plays hard. First team all-conference last year. Jeffries knocked his man down. That's Caroline on the defensive end. Offensive foul, Tulsa. Over on that Tulsa bench, Jordan Caroline, one of the baddest men in college basketball. And that guy was a bad boy when he played at Tulsa. UCLA fans like, please don't show me Shea Seals. <laughs> 1994, UCLA played Tulsa. Ed O'Bannon famously said, I don't even know where Tulsa is. Tulsa in the state of Oklahoma, obviously. The game was played in Oklahoma City. UCLA was down 63-38 at the half. Shea Seals decided to come back to school, work on his game. That summer, he dominated Team USA. College guys versus the pros. What a great player, great career he had at TU. Henson way off from three, and this will go the other way. I uh, was in high school, being recruited by UCLA at the time, and I remember they were, hey, UCLA's down 40. <laughs> they're, what? They're down 40. To who? To Tulsa. Tulsa. Former Tulsa head coach Poole Williamson on that team, Gary Collier. Ponza Johnson off the bench. What a squad. And that was the UCLA team that the next year would go on and win the national championship. It's been a long while since Tulsa has reached those heights. Just a regular in you know, the NCAA tournament, a deep run 
every now and again for that program. And they're hoping that they can build something back up in the American Conference as Corita hits the front end of the 101. Great at play for a great AAU program, Arkansas Wings. And a really stretch of defense. And these TU guys are built. It's a tough league, physical league, the American Conference. Not a high scoring league. Well, when you have Cincinnati, just grown men in that league, I, I think UConn is with Danny Hurley. Can recapture some of the magic in that program. One second differential here. Nevada's hoping that they have the final shot. Well, they will likely run something for Jazz Johnson. He is a tremendous scorer. And you look at Tulsa switch to his own. Johnson deep, deep range. Johnson all the way. Missed it. Two seconds. Tulsa quickly up court. That won't count. Now, Tulsa may have been able to grind defensively, but the Nevada Wolf. Tulsa Golden Hurricane that is 4-0. One of the better teams in the American. And Chris Barnes, the transfer from UTEP, has been using a lane to his advantage, cutting the deficit tonight. Well, we're going to hear from Andy Katz in a second as he caught up with Frank Haith, but you can tell the point of emphasis is they want to move the ball, get into their offense. That was the first time they turned that ball over to three different sides, and Barnes had to drive right down Broadway. Jordan Caroline baseline. Caroline led all scores with 14 points. Thurman off the mark. Taplin, a three. Yes. Big bucket for Sterling Taplin, just like that. Tulsa within six. You, you, you know what a coach is discussing at the half when you watch the first couple possessions. And the first time down, they turn the basketball over side to side. The second time Taplin comes down, you give him space. He just stepped in an easy shot. And Caroline loves the ball at that top of the key. The reason you center the basketball top of the key, there's no help side defensively. Pick set allows Caleb Martin to drain a three. And of course, Caleb Martin has a little bit of that Alonzo ball in terms of stylistically shooting the basketball from the left side of his head. 23-year-old transfer from NC State. Veteran guard. Loves to take and make the big shot. Barnes rises and rattles it in and out. Cody Martin this time ran into a wall. And we're talking about how this Tulsa team has come out of the gates firing. Andy, you've got more? Uh, I do, Alex. And I think Doug was listening to my conversation with Frank Hayes because that's exactly what he told me, which is on offense, they're going to have to move the ball around much quicker. They were standing around too much in that first half. We saw that in those first two possessions. On the defensive end, he told me we've got to limit the second shots. Obviously, uh, Nevada's been able to score in a couple possessions on that second shot. So let's see how they do defensively if they can limit Nevada to one shot. Well, that's the problem right there is Jordan Caroline. And I don't think he was fouled, but he's just such a hard cover. Well, he's only six foot five with long arms, crazy athlete, and he gets it, and he's constantly looking to attack. So it is Caroline at the foul strike. You mentioned his dad, Simeon Rice. Of course, we saw Barry Henson's program. They were devastated when he left Carbondale, transferred worked on his game and he is a dominant player in the Mountain West level. Look at his legs, that body. A soft, adept shooting touch from 15 to 17 feet. If he could stretch his range to NBA range, he would have a legit shot to play in the NBA in small ball. Probably a bit too small, but more needs more skill. Juan Jeffries misses from three. Foul on the Wolfpack. Igbanu looking for the rebound. Got fouled over the back from Cody Martin. Yeah, actually, Cody Martin got called for boxing out. And Igbanu got caught on his back, and that's why Cody Martin did the, the, the victory lap, because he was so frustrated. Didn't want to say anything to the official to get a technical foul, but it was actually a perfect box out, and Igbanu jumped on his back, and there's the classic makeup call which is an uh, equally awful call. 
And Bono breathing, walking it off. Frank Haith, apoplectic. Officials will tell you there's no such thing as a, 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 a makeup call until you actually see a makeup call. Now it all evens out, except we've got two players, another foul tagged to their name. I mean, so quick. Underneath, it's the freshman Porter. Got a bump, and he will shoot foul shots. I mean, this is just incredible footwork from Jordan Carolyn. Catch in the low post, takes a look, watch the spin. So quick and by you. And drops it off to his teammate, the transfer from ODU. And he's just too quick for big guys, and he's strong enough to rebound and defend with a college big man. And frankly, probably strong enough to do it at the NBA level. Not sure he's big enough. Obviously, the difference would be, can he at least make a professional three-point shot? Just got to make it up to keep him honest. Remember how close Tulsa got? Six-point gap. Nevada has stretched it back to 13. Falacoon blocked at the rim by Porter. Falacoon's second effort. Count it. And one. What a heady play to get back to that loose ball and put it up and in. Uh, kind of a tricky pass in there, but Porter's first jump ability outstanding. He tries to maintain verticality, but drops his hands. Uh, Falacoon, the junior college transfer, gets a chance at an and one. And Jazz Johnson is going to get called. When you're, when you're outside of the top of the key, outside the three-point line, you can't go in until the ball hits the rim. That's what the official walked over, patted him on the back. Ben Dugas. Nothing wrong with the box out, but you got to wait till the ball hits the rim. Falacoon converts. Ten-point game. Caleb Martin. Leading to his left in that release you talk about. Jeffries past the timing line, and Taplin sets up the offense, puts down his dribble, slices through the lane, and draws a foul. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how that, that was. It was like a perfect set in volleyball. It ends up getting spiked by Trey Porter. He's driving into contact. I guess it's going to be on Caroline, but I, I struggle to find the foul in that one. Not only a foul, but a shooting foul. Well, I guess it's going to be on Caroline reaching in. It's not a foul up top. Uh, good luck scoring on the Wolfpack in the lane with Trey Porter. Then they bring in Jordan Brown off the bench. Yeah. He barely plays. Six foot eleven Jordan Brown. They go along with the six foot eleven Trey Porter. Caleb Martin again. Now Caleb Martin has decided he's going to prove to the NBA scouts that he can shoot. And that, that was two consecutive bad shots after making a three. Well, I go back to one of the things you said early on, Doug, is play within yourself. Yeah. And Nevada hasn't done that. Maybe they've had some good fortune here this half, but. This foul will go the other way. It's, 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 this has not been the type of five men connected kind of game you would come to expect from the senior laden team. Well, I, I think there's a little bit of frustration. You know, first half, you are one for six. You go into the locker room, you think to yourself, all right, I got to get it going. I got to score offensively instead of scoring within the flow of the offense. But also credit Tulsa. They're doing a really good job of making Nevada take shots in the Oh, Chaz Johnson. Coach Hitterbuck. Five foot eleven drains the three. The lead back to eleven. Chris Barnes draws some contact. Ah, the sounds of sweet lane. Okay. Um, he'll be matching up with the bigs from North Carolina. And like I, I don't think anybody thought three years ago that 
Dylan Ostadkowski matching up against the North Carolina Tar Heels, Luke May, would be the matchup to watch. Right? Yeah. But it really is tonight. Andy, uh, what do you have your eye on? Three top 20 teams in action tonight. Well, I think this is a critical weekend, both for UCLA and Michigan State. Carolina's going to have so many opportunities, and they have Final Four potential. Judge Michigan State from the second half of the Kansas opener on. Yep. Uh, that's how you judge them, and they are certainly playing much better basketball than they were in that first 20 minutes. But for UCLA, Pac-12 is off to a real shaky start overall. This is a big two days for them. We're going to see Moses Brown tonight. You're going to really like him. He can flush it the way that almost went down. <laughs> Um, I would have uh, put that on top five dunks of the year. That'll be a uh, poster. We had a better Miss Dunk in Chicago. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Right? Still pretty good. Max Struz, remember he missed yeah, that dunk when he got fouled? Her. I mean, look, that would have been nasty. Don't get me wrong. A uh, big thing for Cody stepping in, uh, excuse me, uh, Caleb Martin stepping in making that shot is um, that you got to make the free throws. Right, if you get fouled or Miss Dunk, you got to make the free throws. As a team, the percentage is not awful, just under 70%, but not great. And Caleb, a guy who generally is a good free throw percentage. Taplin, I thought that ball was stripped, but foul was called. This game has been so tightly officiated. Sterling Taplin smartly has just decided, you know, I'm going to drive the basketball. And I got to tell you, I didn't see one there either. You, you, you want to let them play. You got to remember for these officials, they are, uh, one of the, my problems is in the evaluation pro process. So they're given kind of a hickey if they miss something that shouldn't have been called. And it seems like a greater punishment than if they call something that they might have, shouldn't have called. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that causes, especially in early season games, to be foul fest. Five at each team. So this will turn into a free throw shooting contest before long. Ten point game. That gap has been pretty steady since the first ten minutes of the game. Now, would have been a nice play with Martin going upstairs to Trey Porter, but the whistle would come first. Well, it's a really interesting set that Eric Musselman used there. You have Trey Porter who's out in the corner. He's not a shooter. And you say, hey, well, forget about it. Forget about paying attention to Caleb Martin going one-on-one. -on -one. And you got Jordan Caroline at the top of the key. Everybody else spread away. But the reason they do it is as soon as Caleb Martin goes into his move, now here comes Trey Porter running in to either catch a lob or to get a rebound. And they're going to give oh, Caleb Martin on the, on the shot. He was throwing a lob. Yeah, I don't know. He was throwing an alley-oop. Either that or it was one of the worst missed shots of Caleb Martin's career. He was either off by a yard and a half or they missed the call. Well, more, <laughs> more of a, an opportunity for free throws for Caleb Martin. This time he gets them back. I'm with you. Next foul. It's Nevada in the bonus. Caitlin is running the offense. Dish underneath. Jeffries gets a bump. And Porter's really good defensively. Yeah. Really good. You know, look, it's hard to cover the Sterling Taplin coming downhill. Actually did a pretty good job. And then he quickly recovers to block a shot. Sixth foul for the Wolfpack. All of a sudden, Caleb Martin has three fouls. And just something to keep an eye on. Trey Porter, spelled by Trey Thurman. So now you kind of downshift, and their lineup is Jordan Caroline's essentially their center. And he'll operate at the top of the key or, or in at the free throw line, and they'll really spread you out as Trey Thurman can shoot the three. And now they become really tough to cover defensively. It basically looks like a 2-1-2 two, two set. You got one guy on the inside. Everybody else stays spread out, and whoever's man helps, that's who gets the jump shot. Thurman hesitated in the corner. Whoa, what a play! Our Continental Tire play of the game as Trey Thurman catches the ball 
Shot fake, looks, sees the help not there, and gets hit across the face, and a little English. <laughs> what a play. Spin that, you gotta spin that ball up, and... That's hard to do if you're Trey Thurman. You sit there the entire second half of the first five minutes, first catch, go one-on-one -on -one and make a finish like that. Taplin looks it in. It's interesting, Thurman had that exchange with Jazz Johnson outside. He and Johnson both sat out a year at the same time and became very close off the court, and their chemistry on court evident. Let's see Johnson, he's just waiting for his chance to unleash a three. So now look, they just spread out around Jordan Caroline. Good luck guarding him one-on-one. -on -one. Yep. Ooh, rolled off the front of the rim. Strong take. Oh, blowing a tire was Corey Henson. And a wide open Jeffries couldn't hit from the corner. Extra pass. Thurman. No. Rebound to Jeffries. Tulsa continues to hang around. Kaplan really good at keeping that dribble alive, probing the defense. Great skip pass. Yep. Jeffries wide open, and he does not miss often from there. Yeah, he missed the last one, and that takes supreme self-confidence to let one fly and miss it. Next catch, I think the next one's going in. Martin spinning baseline. Jazz Johnson for three. Got it. The Wolfpack have had the answer. The lead back to 11. Barnes. Wow. That's hard to do. Well, he, 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 what he did was he screwed him up with his timing. He kind of changed his timing and shot baked. The boy, Jordan Carolina is tough to cover one-on-one. -on -one. Watch Caleb Martin. It's just a 2-1-2 set. And they just let guys go one-on-one. -on -one. And when help comes, you're going to leave Jazz Johnson? Fine. He'll make you pay. Caroline now at the stripe. Nevada in the bonus. And Caroline, not a great free throw shooter. In his career, just 58% from the foul line this year. Wholesale substitutions for Tulsa with immediate timeout approaching. Zeke Moore comes on. Yeah, Zeke, Zeke Moore struggled in his limited minutes in the first half. It, it's hard for a college kid to sit there and come in. And now you know, hey, I have until probably the under 12 timeout to make a play. When you haven't touched the basketball since halftime warm-ups. Taplin gets a breather. Elijah Joyner, the sophomore, three in black, runs the offense. It looked like Horn may have been losing his feet, but got tripped on the way through. And that puts the Golden Hurricane in the book. So Jariah Horn to the line, the transfer from Nebraska. Played really well off the bench in the Little Rock game. Eula came in and he had 10 points. And missing the front end of a one and one becomes an empty possession. Caleb Martin bobs it back out to Caroline. Henson. And now Caleb Martin once again, hand in his face from Joyner, nearly hit. Offensive board and the foul. It is Caroline underneath. We'll go back to the foul line. And Jordan Caroline's just an animal in there. Just an absolute, and, and playing out on the perimeter allows him to run and rebound, and he can't box him out. We mentioned his dad is Simeon Rice. Basically, the way in which his dad would play a defensive end is the same way he plays going towards rebounds. He uses swim moves, uses his body, great footwork, and hands. Andy? 
Well, you talked about his free throw shooting. I can tell you, he is working at it. Yesterday during practice, he was at that free throw line for quite a while. I would say the majority of time that Nevada was on this Orleans Arena floor, he was at the free throw line working on the free throws. Actually, from that side of the court, that's where he was last night. Now he extends the Nevada lead. Entry pass Igbanu. Second effort plays it in. Great pass from Jariah Horn. You mentioned how well Horn played last time out. Ten points against Arkansas Little Rock. Missed that free throw, but looked like he was going to shoot in a beautiful high-low pass. Pulse with a very good zone offense. One reason is they play a lot of zones, so they practice against it. Caleb Martin from the corner. Got it. Now it's been a bit of a sparring match, but that basket extends the lead to 13. And Martin now with 14 points. Joiner to Horn. No. Now there's Martin helping out to allow Caroline to secure the rebound. That pass gets tipped out of play, but the lead is 13 for the Wolfpack. Now you gotta decide which Martin am I on Nebraska, the, the UNO transfer. Up, under, that was after sitting on the bench for five minutes of the second half. Gets the ball, shot fakes, and his rewards for getting the Continental Tire play of the game, sit. <laughs> Well, they've got enough fresh bodies that they uh, don't have to worry about. Yeah, too. but they only been playing four and a half minutes. From the short corner, too much from Jordan Brown. Tango underneath the basket, and it goes back to Nevada. I mean, Jordan Caroline, my favorite word to use, just tell you, indefatigable. Yes, I've heard that two or three times. I've well, used it once on air. But last week. Oh, well, last week. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're working yeah. together a lot. Okay. Exactly. And that's how he competes on the boards. He is unfatigable. But unfatigable, I don't believe, is the word indefatigable is. Okay. Which is essentially the same thing. The same thing. <laughs> Here's Caroline. Yep. And this is very simple basketball. They spread you out. They either throw it to him or they throw it up in the rim and he goes and gets it. Well, he's just right there at the elbow. Nobody's guarding him. And Jariah Horn gets screwed up in his rotation. Completely and thoroughly dominant. The best player on the floor, and it's not really close. Well, what have we here? This might be a foul call. Yeah, I, I think... Like it was going to be a lane I, don't know, I think Abandu took a dive a little bit there. He might have slipped. So they call the foul on Jordan Brown. Are they going to go look to see if there was an elbow thrown or if he just slipped or if he was thrown down maliciously? By the way, Jordan Caroline now, 24 in your picture. One rebound shy of his fourth double-double this year already. Let's take a look. I think it was a foul. I think he just fell. That's one of those. That's one of those refs like, oh man, I think we cut a missed that one. Are you gonna make the makeup call or should I make the makeup call? Right, so watch the big man with the high top fade. Their arms get kind of tangled up there. That actually, yeah, I mean, barely a foul if that. A nice little flop there by Tulsa as Jordan Brown, the freshman. What's that Rafa called? The nickel diver. <laughs> we had plenty of those later on, along with some steamed onions. Steamed onions? Oh, no, steamed, fried. How would you prepare them? Sauteed. Yeah, we saw saute saute them. Saute, this is pretty yeah, great. The, yeah. yeah, they just got their arms tangled. And this is a common foul. And that's Nevada running what's called. That's actually a play. Uh, San Diego State was one of the first teams. It used to allow more guys on the free throw line. But Nevada, that's, that's a called play that somebody has practiced where you cross 
on, the, uh, on a missed free throw. The cross on a missed free throw. So they're going to get two shots and the ball? I don't know where the flagrant foul is. I, I don't get it. I, I, I'm, I'm completely lost. Is that the hook and hold? Uh, that's one of the new rules and emphasis this year. We'll hear from Byron uh, Jarrett, coming over to our table. And we'll hear the explanation. So they did call the hook and hold. Let's so, get so, so through that, Doug. So they got their arms hooked together, and it's called a hook and hold, and it's an automatic F1, flagrant one foul. I don't know, man. It's a, that's a, it, again, this is not the official's issue. This is a rule issue and a point of emphasis for the rules. We get videos on it. Everybody does. But that's supposed to be called a flagrant foul. But that was not a flagrant foul. They just got their arms tangled up. But it's an effort to kind of clean up basketball underneath the bucket. I didn't see it. I, I do think there was some arm hand fighting underneath. We'll see if that makes any sort of difference here. Tulsa trailing by 14. Sterling Taplin, that extended review, got a breather. He's back in the game. A three-pointer from Zeke Moore misfires. A perfectly called play from Frank Hayes. You stack your, your, your ball screen, you put your shooter underneath, your top guy rolls, you get a wide-open three, just doesn't go in. Uh-oh, Jazz Johnson does his thing yet again. Three-point shooter for the Wolfpack. And the lead has ballooned to 17. Tulsa gets a wide-open three, misses, down 14. Nevada comes back and hits the wide-open three. Under 10 minutes to go, and that feels like a big basket. And, and Jazz Johnson may or may not be 5 foot 11, but watch Jordan Brown, the freshman. Look at that screen from... Caleb Martin, or is that Cody Martin? Beautiful screen on the back side. Uh, Cody Martin with the screen. It's the little things that Cody Martin does that frees up Jazz Johnson. Andy, we were talking about Jazz Johnson earlier. Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Like Andy's mic dropped out again. Thanks, Andy. We'll keep an eye on that. <laughs> Our situation. Can you guys hear me? Tulsa, boy, that you, you hate if you're in Tulsa's shoes and Frank Haith, you've been playing such good defense and now you're trailing by 16. Andy? Probably tried. Let it be known. Fifteen-point lead now. Yeah, the free throws. Well, if you're Tulsa, you want to lock in, get this thing under ten, get it under control. Thurman one-on-one -on -one against Jeffries spins, fires it back out. Seven to shoot. Caleb Martin rise and fire, and he drew a foul. Sterling Taplin. Got a piece of him. Well, that's the second one he's gotten here. And this is how Caleb Martin shoots the basketball. The form is funky. He really releases, and then he kicks out every time. And that's a foul up top. That's not even on the foot that he kicks out. That's the kind of play that he's not going to get in Mountain West play on the road. They just won't call it. And then he will get in the NCAA tournament, assuming they get there. Because what happens is, in the league, there'll be a time or two he kicks out his leg and draws a foul. The, 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 the head coach of the other team will send in the, the film to the league office. The officials have become aware of it, and he won't get benefit of the doubt. But when you play against teams you don't normally play against, and the officials don't normally see it, then you'll get those calls. 80 for the Wolfpack. A team that's averaging just a hair over 86 per game. But they, they, it today. they haven't played great offensive at all. <laughs> it's been a sloppy game, if anything. I mean, part of it, I think Tulsa's a very good defensive team. But their defense has led to offense. And Jordan Caroline on the boards and Jazz Johnson knocking in threes. 
for Scott Slayson through the lane. Yeah, this is a game that's had very little flow to it, all the fouls called, and yet, man, this might be the definition of grinding through to be an illegal screen set by Jordan Brown. Now that's a good call, and that's actually the fault of Cody Martin. And he's talking about the screen, and that's not actually Jordan Brown's fault. This, this is the guard's fault. You have to wait until your big man is set before you start going full speed. Uh, he stuck out his elbow and chicken winged him. Uh, that's what Eric must have been saying. Can't chicken wing a guy, they'll get you every time. Mm -hmm. and Brown takes a seat. Entry pass to Ibanu. Yes, off the window. Going up against Thurman. And Ibanu is so effective in that low post and the mid post. All right, Tulsi got it back to 14. Know who you're guarding. Box out Jordan Caroline. Hey, look at that clock. Make Still. Cody Martin shoot jump shots. Or do that. Just hang with him step for step. That'll go out of play. Stays with the Wolfpack. Caleb Martin shooter. Cody Martin does all the little things. Thurman. The block. Catches, squares his shoulder, and lays the ball in. Tremendous set by Fre Frank Haith and his staff. Cody Martin driving. Hit the other side of the rim. The foul called first. Martin back to the foul line. Spelling Thurman. What about it? Oh, this is, if you're looking for flow in this game, you're not getting much, but credit to Wolfpack. Staying steady at There's the that, foul line. That exact same set, they could try and run it again. Or Trey, only Porter did a very good job. Trey Porter did a very good job of stuffing it out defensively. Ten to shoot. Back outside, it's Horn. Oh, he swirls in a three. They're just kind of hanging around here. Yeah. Oh, this is the best line Nevada has. Trey Porter, not a great offensive player, but he's going to run to try and rebound. That's a charge. That was forced up by Porter. And it goes the other way. I, I don't even know why you're arguing that if you're Trey Porter. And down on the other end, with everybody loading up in Bono. Chariah Horn knocks in a three. And I got a chance to cut it under 10. Elbow series from Tulsa. The pro set. <laughs> Jazz Johnson getting the pinball around him there, and there's a travel. Yep. By Curran Scott. Yep. And that's that's Trey, the, the Trey Porter effect. Trey Porter inside, and Curran Scott saw him and tried to kind of just change up his speed and his rhythm. You got to change the timing when you go into a shot blocker before you jump to his chin. Just jump off your right foot instead of your left. The 11th turnover for the Golden Hurricane. That's okay. You'll give. You'll, you'll take that. Porter, right back up with it, and they count it. That's the foul. This is Trey Porter's best offense is getting it off the rim. And you get you get Cody Martin to take a three. That's what you want. But look as he just pushes and shoves and gets better position. And he's too big and too strong. Andy? This is clearly the best lineup that Nevada has. You're going to see a lot of Jazz Johnson closing things out. As we said at the top of the broadcast, Eric Musselman absolutely loves his energy, his athleticism, and what he can do on the defensive side. Oh, Caleb Martin. 86-71. Backtracking is Jazz Johnson. He gets called for the bump. 
Well, there's two Nevada players running into each other, miscommunicating as Elijah Joyner ran into Jariah Horn. And Martin to Martin, who's your favorite Martin? I'm talking with uh, Gus Archibald yesterday, describing these two brothers. Caleb, a lot more outgoing, maybe showing a bit of the personality with that dunk. Cody, a bit more reserved. Apparently, they have constantly, throughout their career, tried to one-up each other, challenge each other, either by the numbers at the end of the year or awards won. In this case, Caleb, a preseason All-America. Cody, Defensive Player of the Year in the Mountain West. Well, these are 23-year-old grown men. And they are strong, athletic, and have a high basketball IQ. I would say Caleb hasn't played particularly well today, kind of selfishly at the offensive end. But even when the, the, the jump shot's not going, they buy in defensively and play very, very hard. That was Caleb who, and being selfish in that overtime against Texas, that comeback victory. First round in the NCAA tournament, hit three straight three-pointers to bury the Longhorns. Ball sneaks away, goes back to the Golden Hurricane. And that's the kind of thing you want, just keep shooting, right? Well, they just, that, that was how people guarded him, was they made them shoot, made them shoot contested shots, and he has unrelenting self-confidence. That's the difference between him and Cody. Cody more reserved personally, more reserved as a shooter as well. Scott way off. Here comes the Wolf Pack. Cody Martin peels back into the corner. And now you're starting to get to this time of the ball game. 13 point lead where you don't need to shoot early in the clock. Martin, a little hop step, drives and scores. And that's where Cody's so effective. He's not much of a jump shooter, but he's not going to get baited into taking him. Igbanu, count it, and one. Tulsa continues to hang around, but it's the brothers Martin who have done most of the damage as we take a look at our assist to the game sponsored by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 1 800 State Farm. And that's Cody to Caleb. The best Martins to play in Vegas since Dean. Sit on that one all day. Yeah, you, that, yeah. That you have. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was worth it, I hope. 88 points now for the Wolfpack. Foul shooting became an issue early this half on the pile of fouls called. Tulsa's in big time foul trouble. Ivano with four. And they missed another front end of a one and one. But like Ivano's an impressive physical specimen and low post players. The officials get together and realize they might have screwed that one up. He's frustrated and we're missing free throws. And you know, one of these Nevada does is they have such great depth that they can absorb foul trouble a little bit better than other teams. So if they foul you every time down the court, it doesn't affect you like it affects other teams. They figure even with the bonus becoming an issue so early in the half, only one guy on the floor right now for Nevada has four fouls, and that's Porter. Johnson hit the side of the backboard. I don't think he meant to make that one. No. Barnes quickly into the front court. Taplin, lob pass inside. Great. Right. Put up full defensively this season. But so much pressure on Jim Harbaugh's club to win in the horseshoe. Mm. I cannot wait. Yep. And uh, Gus on the call. Oh. Sign me up. Yep. Gus, Joel Clatt, Jenny Taft. What a great crew. Here in Las Vegas, an 11-point game. Caleb Martin way off the mark from three. Another bad shot from three. Tulsa again hanging around, down by 11, and just trying to navigate through all the fouls called in this game. 46 of them called in this game. But Caleb Martin's taking awful shots here. He's 4 of 14, 3 of 11 from three. And he's taking four really four shots. 
Yeah, 19 points would not tell you what this game has been like for him. And, and I don't think that Tulsa or UMass tomorrow, potentially, and there's that same set. Oh! Daquan Jeffries! Tulsa with one huge dunk is right back in it. This is the same set they ran to start the second half. And last time, Daquan Jeffries just drove in and laid it in. Now, if you're Tulsa, just don't foul. Box out Jordan Caroline. Contain the basketball in Cody Martin, a tremendous driver and passer. Igbanu and Jeffries on the floor for Tulsa. Both have four fouls. Both teams in the double bonus. Cody Martin to his brother Caleb in the corner. A three. No. Rebound tapped up and in by Thurman. What a play. He do everything you can to stop the initial, initial thrust. But it's the second shot where Treshawn Thurman and Jordan Caroline beat you. 90 to 79. 220 to play. Jeffries to the corner, a jumper off the mark from Barnes, rebound, punch to the air, Caleb Martin had it, and it got poked back out of his hands, but stays with Nevada. Well, let's, let's take a look at Daquan Jeffries, mm, thunder dunking, one more time, into your living room, from Edmond, Oklahoma, and then Treshawn Thurman with the little tip in. Edmond, of course, northern suburb of Oklahoma City. Jeffries led Tulsa in scoring each of the last three games, but has been used sparingly, and obviously foul trouble part of that. In fact, I believe that, yep, that was his fifth, so he has fouled out. Now, frustrating day for a fantastic basketball player. Really built his body, built his game. There'll be better days to come. This is really big, a difficult game to play in because Nevada has such much better depth. Andy? But going forward, I'll tell you, Jeffries is the player that Tulsa will play through. And if they're going to be a top five team in the American, like Frank Hayes believes, then he's going to have to have a all-conference type season. That's a frustrating day. Fouling out, especially in that last one, allowing Nevada to regain a 13-point lead. But this is actually a foul, though. I mean, like, look, Martin Zigbanu is a fantastic... Every time, by the way, if you track it, and I, I don't have the actual technology with me, but if you track it, every time he's gotten a low post has been at that right block. That is his house. That is his office. But he has struggled from the free throw line. Missed the front end of a one and one Could have cut it to single digits. And as much as he's only five of eight, missing two front ends of a one and one and missing here. Think about the firepower Nevada throws out at you where they're not playing well offensively. And they still have 92 points. <laughs> exactly. We get tacos if they hit 100? I don't know. I'm Caroline double team, but... Chris Barnes tag. Well, he can stick his hands up in the air, but he fouled him. And he's, and that's on Joyner. Uh, good call to Joyner. Yeah, part of it is Jordan Caroline's smart. He drives into the contact. He knows no one is taking that basketball from him. Vice grips his hands. Well, you mentioned it earlier, just the, the strength, the poise that Jordan Caroline brings to the table. You know, you know who he plays like in college? Corliss Williamson. Of course, Arkansas and Fayetteville, not far from Tulsa. Driving distance. Nola Richardson started his career coaching at, at Tulsa at TU. One of the first in the long line of great coaches at TU. Undersized post player who's just too strong 
and too strong for guards and too quick for big guys. Bonner puts down his dribble. 90 seconds left. Taplin hits the three, which again keeps things interesting. I like Sterling Taplin a lot. I think this team, I'm with Andy, I think this team's going to be good in the American. One of the few four-year players have come through Tulsa under Frank Hayes. And largely considered amongst, if not the best point guard in the American. And you had Jalen Adams at UConn. Yeah. Martin shot contested. His brother, Cody, got to it. Another minute to go. The 11-point deficit. Taplin got through the initial wave, but not the second. And it's Jordan Caroline who gets hit. Jordan and Tap Taplin is hurt as it was just... That is big for Tulsa. They have another game to play tomorrow. They can ill afford an injury to their senior point guard. And Frank Haith, you want to talk about a glare. He gave the officials a glare. Continues to do so. And this has been a crazy physical game. He got his shot blocked. This is Treshawn Thurman. Comes back and recovers, blocks the shot. Oh, yeah, his ankle clipped. I, I actually think that's Taplin's fault because he did kick out his leg. I want to point out, Elijah Joyner fouled out, but I love the effort on the play. You're not going to get a dunk and hang on the rim and scream. But that's a tough injury for a tremendous player at TU. Sterling Taplin, when he was first getting recruited, got interest from schools kind of in the low major side, Siena, St. Pete's. But Frank Hayes believes that... Well, watch how he kind of kicks out his right leg after he gets his shot blocked. I don't think he did so intentionally, but that's just wrong place, wrong time. That wasn't... And it wasn't really a foul. It was a clean block. And Joyner, as Taplin gets... It's like the last thing we want. We're in the last minute of a game on Thanksgiving morning, and you got a game tomorrow, and he's, if not your best player, your second best player, and maybe your most important player. Not a sight Tulsa fans wanted to see. Caroline after the foul from Joyner, back at the strike. Tulsa give them credit. They have been physical the whole game, but Nevada's hit their foul shots. I wonder if four free throws that they've put in. I'll give Andy something to salivate on. Andy Katz something to salivate on. If it's me, and I've watched every Nevada game on tape, Jordan Caroline should be the All-American. No offense to Caleb Martin, who's a tremendous player. So oftentimes we think of NBA prospects in terms of how we rate a player. He is a virtually unguardable at the college level big guy. Well, this was a grind and a gutty performance for a Nevada team that is going to wind up nearing the century mark. What a pass from Cody Martin. And out with the three. <laughs> Caroline underneath looking for the rebound. They're going to finish near 100 points here today. And yet... We didn't think they had a good offensive day. It was no. a free throw line. Come, Caleb Martin took some bad shots and couldn't make some other ones. But they're not all pretty. And the sixth-ranked Wolfpack will live to fight another day here in Las Vegas. Caroline gets a nice hand. Final seconds. <clears throat> Her and Scott hits from the corner. This Tulsa team will be good, no doubt, in the American. They take on Southern Illinois tomorrow, but it is Nevada to take on UMass tomorrow. In